So today we are going to give you a lowdown on the latest shoe to join to join. <laughs> it's really appreciated though. So thank. Oh, <laughs> so let's dive in and give you a few specs. Uh, give you a few facts and figures. Welcome back folks and welcome back to another first run first impressions video. I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. So today we are going to give you the lowdown on the latest shoe to join the very much hyped carbon plated running shoe party and it is Scott's Speed Carbon RC. The first thing is I think Scott have nailed the design of this shoe. I think it looks awesome in this bold bright yellow colorway and I feel fast just looking at it. A massive shout out to Scott Running for sending the shoe down to be tested and reviewed here at the channel. It's really appreciated guys, so thanks for the support. So the plan is to give you a few details about the spec and the construction of this bright yellow speed machine, and then we're gonna be going outside and putting the shoe through its paces. So let's dive in and give you a few facts and figures on the all new Speed Carbon RC. It retails in the UK for 170 pounds and it weighs in at 260. 66 grams in a men's UK 9.5. It runs off a 5mm heel offset and it's been designed to go up against all those other super shoes on the market. So your Vaporfly X Percents, your Metaspeed Skies, uh, Endorphin Pro and the RC Elite 2 etc etc. Who would have thought we'd have so many carbon plated race day shoes to choose from? When it comes to the upper it is extremely lightweight in construction and the fabric used looks and feels quite similar to the fabric on Nike's Vaporfly Next Percent 2. It's actually pretty much transparent, you can see through it, so the shoe should be nice and breathable. Like a lot of stripped back racers, we get a gusseted tongue in that upper and it is very thin in design, so pretty much no padding at all. So not really a big fan of that in a running shoe so it's going to be really interesting to see how that tongue performs. We've got a fair bit of structure in the heel cup especially for a strip back racer but like the tongue you don't get a lot of padding around that heel collar or the heel cup you've just got this sort of little internal pod of padding that works around that heel. We've got some overlays stemming from the back end of the shoe to the midfoot and around the lace eyelets and then finishing it off you get this no so toe guard just to try and stop any irritation but to add a bit of durability. Moving down to the deep midsole and it is constructed using Scott's Kinetic Foam but this variant of that compound is their lightest and most responsive foam to date. Uh, on first touch it does feel a bit firmer in that midsole compared to some of the other carbon plated super shoes I run so it'll be really interesting to see how that feels underfoot when we get stuck into the session later. Scott have worked a Carbite DFX carbon fibre plate into the midsole of the shoe so like a lot of carbon running shoes it's pretty stiff in construction but Scott claim that this plate is uniquely designed because it's dynamically flexible so basically what that means is the stiffness of that plate should adjust as you up the speed giving you power and efficiency when needed. Last up is the outsole and you can see we've got a fair bit of exposed EVA at the midfoot there and you can you can see the carbon plate poking through but Scott have added some of their super lightweight speed traction rubber in the high wear areas just to offer good levels of grip in all situations and a bit of added durability when you're putting in the miles. So that's a bit of information about Scott's all new carbon plated race day shoe but it's about time we got running and it's been a long time since I've run in a Scott running road shoe. I think probably about eight years but I did really enjoy the experience back then. It was a really nice running shoe. So we got a great session plan with the shoe with some nice progressive speed worked in. So it should be a thorough test for a race day shoe but the last thing I've got to mention is the shoe smells like marzipan which is a bit weird but it's good because I love marzipan so mm, very nice but anyway that's enough of that let's get running Right, that 
that is the nice steady one mile warm up done. And the session to test out the Speed Carbon RC tonight, we're gonna to be doing a progressive 10K. So we're gonna start off about seven 30 minute mile in and we're gonna gradually build through to sort of predicted marathon pace around sort of 6.40, 6.30. Uh, I don't know whether you noticed, I keep saying we, but I have a guest runner with me tonight and it is the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Hello, Steve Wyatt. Um, if you follow the channel, then you obviously know who this guy is, but if you're new to the channel, then Steve is a really talented sort of ultra distance trail runner. He's a bit of a leg end down here in Cornwall and he is the winner or the joint winner of the Arc of Attrition, which is a super challenging 100 mile coast race. But a, a thing people might not know is that Steve hates running on the road. Um, he can do it and he can run fast on the road, but he just doesn't enjoy it. So for years and years and years, I've been trying to get him to go back and push and try and set a marathon PB out on the road. And finally, he's agreed to do it. Now he actually hates road running so much that I've had to lend him a pair of my road shoes because he doesn't even own a pair, but you know, it's gonna be a great experience for him. And I think we should just let the viewers know a bit of history about your marathon experience, Steve. So, when was the last marathon on the road you ran? I have actually, I can't remember. <laughs> Probably 2000, it was, might have been 2010 or 2011. It was that long ago. And I'm sure there was like 3.27. 3.24 was my previous London time. And then my PB is actually on a hilly course in Bodmin in the middle of winter, 3.07. So I, I, I like my hills. Yeah. So, so no, the flat, the flat road has got to kill me. Yeah, Marathon PB 307. I mean, he can go so much quicker than that. Obviously, that was on a hilly course in Cornwall, on a really challenging course. We're going to be going up to Manchester, run a super flat, quick route, <laughs> and we are going to be pushing for a sub three hour marathon time because he can definitely do it and he needs to tick that box off before he starts to get too old and too slow because that is the reality of it all. So this in if theory... already there. <laughs> <laughs> so this in theory is our first session building towards Manchester Marathon in October. So I suppose we've done enough talking. We need to Go test on. these shoes out. So let's get running. Right, let's hit the road and let's start this session. Come on. So that is the first mile rep done. Just a nice steady 7.30. We got a bit of a headwind, but next mile 7.10, 7.15. So like I said, we're gonna gradually creep it up to that sort of predicted marathon pace. So far, so good in the shoes. Speed Carbon RC. It's feeling actually really nice underfoot. I thought the cushioning felt a bit firm when I pushed into it, but actually running it, it feels quite nice and soft and bouncy. That strip back up, uh, Feeling good over the top of my foot, no issues with the tongue being super thin, but maybe not so good in the heel. I don't feel that heel's being gripped too tightly. Obviously we're only a couple of miles in. This is Steve's first experience in an endorphin speed road shoe. So what do you think, Steve? Yeah, very pleasant, like a pair of slippers there. It's nice good shoe, isn't it? Nice bouncy feel, rolls off, rolls on, rolls off. Hey, he's a lucky boy, isn't he, eh? Hasn't been in a road shoe for years and his first experience back at endorphin speed. Not a bad first choice. Right, let's push on. We are pushing into our third rep. So we're down to sort of 6.55 minute mile in now. The shoes kind of come alive once I've upped the tempo. That geometry in the midsole feels really quick, really efficient, really nice underfoot. First bit of speed work for a while, Steve. How are the legs feeling? Yeah, the legs are okay. Good. Yeah, it's interesting running along this flat. Yeah. Tucked into the wind. Yeah. Yeah, we got a pretty, pretty tough headwind to deal with. So it should be nice when we turn around and come back. Almost into rep four. So we're going to be pushing down to that sort of predicted marathon pace soon. Happy day. We're into the fifth rep. Starting to have to dig in a bit now. There's definitely going to be some training needed if we're going to go sub three at Manchester. Just holding that marathon pace for a few minutes is pretty tough. So I'm not sure I could do it for uh, 
two hours 59 minutes but we've got weeks to train so we'll be ready on the day so we're sort of up to 6 40s now how are you feeling stevie yeah it's um not been this place for a while yeah, yeah. maybe a year and a half i think <laughs> it's definitely going to be challenging to begin with but we'll soon get those marathon legs but gonna dig in the last race is going to be pretty challenging but we'll get it done onwards and upwards We've just crossed over to the last mile. So last big effort. I'm gonna try and hit sort of six to eight minute mile for the last one. And just hang on for dear life. All right, let's go. Oh, oh dear me. Oh, oh my God. Wave to the train. Hi train. That was so tough. I suppose that's what happens when you haven't done any speed work all year and then you're gonna try and run a sub three hour marathon. But this bloke here yeah. makes it look flipping easy. There's a five, don't, five, you, don't you just hate people like this? Five mile warm up you know? one mile sprint. There's me huffing and puffing and he's skipping along like waving to people and oh, that was my head in. But it was tough. The shoes felt good. Um, it was a bit firmer than some of the other super shoes I've run in definitely but not firm uncomfortable just a bit firmer midfoot hold really good shoe felt really responsive when we upped the tempo that uh, rocker in the midsole felt great but I'm not convinced about the heel but we've got a nice very steady Mr Wyatt cool down of a mile and then when we get back to the flat we'll give you a bit more details of how I felt the shoes performed how it's felt how I feel about the fit of the shoe so let's get back to the flat and we'll give you an update. Come on. Well, that was a lot tougher than I expected it to be. And it just shows where my fitness is and how much training I need to do before the marathon. But I really am chuffed that I've managed to talk Steve round to hitting the road again and chasing that marathon time. He is such a talented runner. You can see from that session, he made it look so easy. He wasn't even out of breath at the end. So I think it'd be a big shame if he didn't tick that sub three hour marathon box. So we're gonna be heading up to Manchester in October for Manchester Marathon and getting on that start line. And we're gonna be chasing that time and we're gonna be bringing you guys along for the ride. Anyway, back to the shoe in question, the Scott Speed Carbon RC. And I think that was a pretty good session for a shoe that's built for speed and it performed pretty well on its first outing. The lightweight upper felt great, nice and airy around my foot with this sort of transparent mesh fabric. I'd say on sizing it's true to size, so this is a UK 9.5 and it fitted my foot shape spot on. I'd say it's got average width in the toe box, so it's not a super wide shoe, but it's definitely not really narrow like some of those race day shoes out there. Really nice midfoot hold in the upper from this gusseted tongue in the shoe, and I was worried about how thin and under padded that tongue was, but it actually felt nice and comfortable across the foot. I didn't feel the laces digging through that tongue at all. Speaking of the laces, really like the laces that Scott have used in this shoe. Some laces can be quite hard to sort of get that lock down and hold around your midfoot. Not the case with these. They locked down nice and tight around that midfoot and they didn't come loose while I was running. So a pretty positive experience when it comes to the upper of the shoe, apart from the heel cup. I did feel that that heel shape wasn't fitting my foot shape particularly well and there was definitely a bit of slippage in the shoe. I did stop trying to adjust it a couple of times, trying to get a better hold, but there was still a bit of movement throughout the run. I think next time I'm gonna use that top spare eyelet to do a sort of runner's knot to see if I can get a better hold, better lockdown in the back end of the shoe, just to see if it makes a difference. Moving down to the important part of a speedy race day shoe, the carbon plated midsole. And again, it performed well out on its first run I'd say it's not as soft and bouncy as some of the carbon plated shoes I own but the combination of that kinetic foam and that DFX carbon plate 
did make the shoe feel nice and responsive. That aggressive geometry felt super efficient, especially as we went through the session and the tempo got quicker. It was nice and dry out there this evening, but that speed rubber compound on the outsole offered good levels of traction. Obviously, as we put more miles in the shoe over the next couple of weeks, I'm sure we'll get to test it out in some wet conditions because after all, it is the summertime in the UK. So all in all, a pretty positive first run experience in the new carbon plated race shoe from Scott. Apart from that bit of heel movement, um, it was only very, very slight and I did notice it less as we went further along in the run, but never a fan of heel slippage in a running shoe. So we're going to keep an eye on that over the coming weeks and we'll try a few different things out to see if we can stop it happening. I suppose the question to ask is where does this shoe rank alongside some of the other carbon plated race day shoes that I've run in? I'm a massive fan of Nike's Vaporfly Next Percent 2 and I think it would take some shoe to outperform that shoe when it comes to fit, feel, responsiveness and the fact that it just feels so exciting to put on your foot and to go and run in and I'm not sure the Scott shoe is that shoe. At 266 grams it, in a UK 9.5 it is quite a bit heavier than some of those other speed shoes that I've tried. The Vaporfly coming in at 214 grams and the Metaspeed Sky an even lighter 209 grams. Also having that slightly firmer midsole compound I didn't feel like I was getting as much pop when I came through to toe off that I get in some of those other shoes. But we definitely have to take into consideration this retails at 170 pounds, so quite a bit cheaper than some of them other shoes. With the Vaporfly being 209 pounds and the Metaspeed Sky an even more expensive 225 pounds. Obviously, this is just our first run, first impressions, and we're going to be getting more miles in the shoe. And then we'll be back with a full in depth review at Run for Adventure very soon. But that is the new carbon plated race day shoe from Scott Running, the Speed Carbon R. See. Really hope you enjoyed it guys, really hope you found it helpful. We have left links in the description below for the shoe if you want to find out any information and it would be great to get your first impressions. So if you've been running in a pair, let us know in the comments below how you're getting on. Really looking forward to getting stuck into some quality marathon training over the coming weeks. It's something I haven't done for a long time and boy do I need it. That session we've done tonight should have felt pretty straightforward and it really didn't. So you know three months miles at predicted marathon pace feeling quite tricky then I've definitely got a long way to go but I know we'll get there in the end. Don't forget you can follow us on our other social media platforms whether it be Instagram, Facebook or Strava and if you enjoyed the video hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But for now guys thanks for watching it's really appreciated we will see you back here very soon and as always stay safe and keep on running. So we're going to do a stay safe and keep on running. Ready? Yeah. Steady. One, two, three. Stay, Stay safe, safe and, and keep on running. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's do that again. Okay. Stay safe. Oh, what? Well, yeah. Ready? Yeah, yeah. One, two, three. Stay, Stay safe, safe and, and keep on running. <laughs> What's your. What are you still waiting? Do it again. Why? Why do you keep stopping? Stay safe and keep on running. Little pause. Right, okay. Stay, Stay safe. <laughs> Stay safe. <laughs> keep three, wait, on running. No. Three, two, one. Stay, Stay safe, safe and keep on running. You didn't pause. Right. Right. Three, two, one. Stay, Stay safe, safe and keep, keep on running. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. Stay safe and keep on running. Woo!